6011-2 tells us that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us and that the Lord came to heal the brokenhearted and He came to set the captives free. It is evident that by the amount of people that visits the holy places everywhere, that people are seeking for healing. They're seeking for not only physical healing but emotional and spiritual healing. My name is Vianney Bontero. Welcome to a new show that Guadalupe Media is doing on Healed, Hold, and Happy. And it is my honor to welcome Father Jim Blunt, who has an amazing healing ministry and who loves Belize. And we love him as well. Welcome home, Father Jim. Thank you, sister. It's good to be here. I love Belize. And I have the relic of the True Cross in my hand. I, was, I preach around the world now. I was preaching in Lithuania just a couple months ago. And there was a blind man in the congregation. I touched his eyes with his cross. He began to see. So I said, bring him back. For the end of the service, we'll touch him again. I touched him a second time, and he was given back 20-20 vision. He was completely blind. Now he has 20-20 vision. This is that Holy Cross. We've had hundreds of miracles. And so uh, before wasting any time, Vianney, I'm going to bless you and the congregation who's watching. Thank you, Father. May God bless all of Belize with healing of body, mind, heart, and soul. Jesus is alive, Jesus is real, Jesus is good, and he is beautiful. And I bless you now in his name and in his power. May all of Belize be converted, healed, touched, and transformed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I felt the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Please, God, amen. And that's amazing that you have the true cross. I've been learning a bit about relics yeah. and the first class relics. And it, to my amazement, um, some of our Catholics um, don't even know the significance and the power of the relics that we have. So can you speak a little bit on that? Yes, well, the church categorizes relics into three compartments, you might say, first, second, and third class relics. So a first class relic generally is part of the body of a saint which would normally be a bone or a piece of hair, and sometimes a piece of heart tissue. So it's a piece of the actual body of the saint. A second class relic is something that the saint owned, like maybe part of his shirt, or maybe the desk that he used all his life, a piece of that desk, a piece of wood. So it's something that belonged to the saint. And a third class relic is an article that's been touched to a first or a second class relic. So you can, you can touch, let's say, a shirt to the bone of a saint, and that shirt's called a third-class relic. Okay. And yes, we've had spectacular miracles from all three kinds of relics, and it's biblical. There's actually a biblical doctrine. St. Paul once wrote in the New Testament, he said, take this handkerchief, it's my handkerchief, and I bless it, and give it to the people, and they will be healed when they touched it. So relics are not Catholic, they're biblical. <laughs> They're biblical and every Christian should be using them. It's right in the Bible. And so we thank God for the gift of relics. And it's another way of extending the mercy and the power of the Holy Spirit who was won for us through Jesus Christ. And he imparts his power to those who follow him. Priests and sisters, but also lay people like yourself and even teenagers can have the Holy Spirit and heal people. So we thank God. My dad used to say this, my daddy. He said, thank God for God. So I still remember that today. Thank God for God. The greatest gift of them all is God. And Jesus is the one who brought us God. And the Catholic Church has the fullness of Jesus and the fullness of the truth. And I want to call upon all of the leaves to come to Jesus. If you need healing, do not go to a corredera. Do not go to a witch. You're going to get sicker. And you will owe the devil. You'll get sicker and still owe him. Don't go to anyone like that. Go to Jesus Christ. And that, I wanted to speak a little bit about that. Yeah. People are seeking for healing in today's world. And when they've exhausted going to the doctor and nothing is happening, I see the faith is a little bit lost. And so there's all of these. And you can see them on Facebook nowadays where they're selling these oils and he sprays to do, to do um, sort of like witchcraft. And because people are so desperate, they go to these uh, methods, 
So can you speak a little bit about that and, and what you've experienced in your healing ministry um, on the power of God's healing and not only that, His love and His mercy for His people? Yes. Well, I think God sometimes allows us to get into a pickle. He allows us to have a hard time. We all need it. The last thing we need is to be spoiled brats. And so we have to have crosses in our lives. It can be sickness as well. So crosses in themselves are not always bad because sometimes that's the only thing that makes me reach up to God. The problem is that many people have never been taught about God. Or if they are Christians, even Catholics, they've never been taught that God is alive and real and that he heals even today. Even some priests don't know this or talk about it, but the healing power is available to every generation, to every generation, it's available to this generation. So the problem is that people have not been taught about God, about Jesus, about healing, and so instead of reaching up, they reach down. They reach down to the devil, and they go to witches and to warlocks and other things that are kind of goofy, the problem is, with this is you don't really normally receive a healing. You might receive a temporary healing for a month and then it gets worse because only Christ Jesus can do a true healing that lasts. And so the first step of healing is to reach up to God. And perhaps the first work that we need to do in beautiful beliefs is to pray for a revival of faith faith not in ourselves certainly not in witches or in satan but faith in god and in jesus christ the only messiah the only savior and faith in the gifts he's given to us like having a faithful priest to pray over you or using holy water or using the holy rosary and by the way the rosary is a significant source of healing when we pray the rosary the mother of christ jesus prays to him for our healing this is very interesting to me, you see. Why? Because so many people in Central America go to a witch woman instead of going to the holy woman. Right. Don't go to the witch woman. She's going to make you worse. She's going to make money too, by the way. That's Guess how much true. I charge for healing? Zero. I don't even have a salary. I've never received a salary. Because Jesus is the one who gives the gifts. I dare not charge for what he does. Every witch charges but Jesus and Mary never charge. In fact, they paid the price already. They already paid the price. So never go to anyone of darkness. Go to Jesus. If you want to go to a woman, go to the holy woman, this woman who's the mother of God. And more miracles happen through the Virgin Mary than any other source in the world. Jesus entrusts his gifts to his mother. And how could that be? Well, I saw it in my family growing up. How? Because my daddy was a lawyer. And he worked hard, and it's kind of funny, my daddy worked hard, but he would give the funds to my mother. She would go out and buy the groceries, but daddy, daddy earned it, but gave it to mom. She worked hard too, and she went out and bought the things we needed. It's kind of like that with salvation. Jesus went out and worked on Calvary. He worked to win for us the grace to be saved. He says, here mama, it's all here in your arms. Now you use this to buy gifts and healing for everyone. It's kind of like that, you see. He's entrusted his gifts to his mother the way my dad, maybe your dad too, entrusted the funds to mama. That is so beautiful, Father. Um, speaking about the Blessed Mother, I love the Blessed Mother. Um, she is the first person I go to and uh, it's, it's sometimes I have that difficulty explaining it to um, friends and family why I pray to the Blessed Mother. But I've seen her work in my own life. Um, so I'm happy that you're speaking with the Blessed Mother. And in one of the, um, I've heard you say often um, that we go to Mary as well to pray for the healing of emotion or, or emotions, emotional healing, or things that are happening in our families. So I'd like to touch a little bit on, on our families too because um, the message of Fatima said the attack will be on the families and marriages. And we know a lot of people are suffering through this very silently sometimes. Um, but you see a lot of broken families which cause a lot of damages in, 
in our communities and then we lose the faith yeah so maybe we can share a little bit about that and, and some testimonies um, on what people can do like you said reach out to, to God first and yes well the family is much more important than we realize and that's starting to become clear now the family is the building block not only of the nation but of the church and the family, including marriage, and marriage is between a man and a woman. The family and marriage were God's design, God's creation. He didn't read it in the book, he thought of it himself. God designed holy marriage and holy family. And literally the family is an image of the Godhead. The family is an image of God himself. Why? Because God is not just one, God is three. One pope actually said this. He said, God is a family. God is a family. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So God is an intimate community of love who belong to each other. That's what a human family is. And so when the Bible says we're made in the image and likeness of God, it doesn't mean just Adam. It means Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve and their beautiful children. That is a reflection of the Godhead. Three or more people living in a sharing of intimate love. It makes us, in a certain sense, just like God. So no one is ever a Christian alone. There's no such thing. There's a beautiful saying that says, we'll never have it all together, but together we'll have it all. We'll never have it all together, but together we'll have it all. So in a certain sense, the family is the key to life. The key to life. And when that's broken, we are broken. We were never to, to go through life solo. And so many people want to do it on their own. Like to be like, like Mr. Big Shot or Mrs. Big Shot, you know. It's so egotistical. But what happens is inside they dry up. They become like a desert. They dry up and crack and end up dying alone and lonely. That's not the way to do it. That we were meant to serve one another, to love each other. And when we do that, we start becoming fulfilled. That we make each other better people. I don't need to worry about anything. God will always provide. As I seek out for your needs, He provides for mine. It's something remarkable. And so the family should teach me not to be self-centered. The family teaches me to be other-centered. So one of the greatest healings needed today, indeed, is to heal the family. It might begin with something as simple as this, that each of us watching would say a prayer of thanksgiving to God for our mothers and our fathers, and our siblings to say a prayer of thanksgiving. And I want to say the Lord's Prayer now, Beyond, sure. that everyone watching and ourselves, this is just a, a thanksgiving prayer to thank God. And you say, well, my dad's not perfect. Well, guess what? Nobody's dad is perfect. So don't worry about that. Well, my mom's not perfect. Well, nobody's mom is perfect. And guess what? When you become a father and you become a mother, you won't be perfect either. So give your mom and dad a break. Give them a break and God will give you a break. Amen? Amen. But our parents, perhaps they did the best they could. So, well, I don't like my dad. Well, maybe his dad beat him. So forgive your daddy. Maybe he's doing the best he can right now. And if you love him and you pray for him, your dad might blossom in front of you. I saw it happen in my family. So we'll say in our Father now, just to thank God for our families and to forgive whoever may have hurt us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. My God, we love you and we thank you for the gift of our life and for the gift of our families. Forgive us if we've hurt anyone in our families Give us the grace to appreciate our fathers and our mothers and our siblings, both now and always, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love to pray.
Father, you said you spoke about forgiveness, and even our Father speaks about forgiveness. Sometimes it's so hard for us to forgive. How can we get through this blockage? Because you've said in um, in your healing masses sometimes that forgiveness can be one of the biggest blockages for preventing us to heal. So how can we get over this hurdle, and and how can we, you know, overcome so that we can forgive and receive the, the deep healing that we need in our hearts? Well, first an example, when I was a teenager, I went to a healing mass, long before I was a priest. And uh, the priest was Father Robert DiOrio. He was a wonderful healing priest. It was in Gainesville, Florida, where I went to college. And there were 10,000 people in this stadium. And Father Ralph was been given special gifts of healing and other gifts that go with that, like the word of knowledge, where you know things that you can't know normally. And so, God was using him to heal many, many people. He would just lift up his hand and an altar boy a hundred yards away would fall to the ground. Wow. There was a Catholic nun, he said, sister, do you need a healing? And sister went like this. Father put his hand up, they were a hundred yards away. Two sisters fell down together, boom, unconscious. It was kind of fun. It's fun <laughs> to see these beautiful miracles. And then he said, many healings were happening. Like one girl there, her legs, she had a limp. One leg was shorter than the other. He said, stretch out your legs. And he put his hands up. He was on the ground. She was in the stadium. And her legs grew in front of us. Oh, wow. We saw it. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Believes Jesus is the only healer. No one else can heal. No one else. Only Jesus. Amen? Amen. Only Jesus. Turn to Jesus. To no one else. Only to Jesus. And so Jesus told Father Ralph there was a woman wearing a red blouse in the bleachers over here. There were 10,000 people. I mean, you couldn't see her. He says, there's a woman in a red blouse and she has a cancer on her chest. She needs a healing. Would you please stand up? And we all looked around and sure enough, a woman in a red blouse stood up. She had a black dress and a red shirt. And he says, mama, you have cancer, don't you, on your chest? And she said, yes, father. He says, let me pray for you. It's amazing he knew this. God spoke to him. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And only Jesus can send the Holy Spirit, you see? And so he knew by God's Spirit, he said, let me put up my hand and he prayed for her. And we all were like, go, go, Jesus, go. Because everyone was being healed. And he finished praying, he says, how do you feel now, Mama? Is the, is the lump gone? She said, no, Father, it's still there. We all went, oh, no. Because we want Father to win. We want you to win? Right. That was the first one, nothing happened. He said, well, let's pray again, he said. He says, put your hand on your chest, I'm going to pray. So Father prayed us, and we all were praying secretly for Father. 10,000 of us were praying. Put his hand up again. He says, now, Mama, how do you feel? He says, it's still there. He looked at her. I will never forget this for the rest of my life. Father Ralph said, ma'am, there's someone you need to forgive. I'm getting cold seed right now. This happened to me too in my ministry. Who is it? And she said, oh, Father, nobody. I love everyone. You know, that's a, that's a lie. Would you hear that? You know what I mean? Right. So he said, Mama, there's someone you need to forgive. Who is it? Oh, Father, not me. Then he got strong. And there's something called tough love. We have to have tough love sometimes. He said, ma'am, who is it? She said, my husband, put her head down. He said, yes, it's your husband. Now I want you to forgive him right now, quietly. We're gonna pray for you and you forgive him now. You just say, Jesus, I forgive my husband in your name. So she did that quietly. He said, good, let me pray now. He prayed, he says, now mama, put your hand on your chest. How do you? It's gone, she said, it's gone. Mama mia. So Belizean brothers and sisters, you have to forgive your spouses, your children, your family members, your teachers, maybe your area representative, your government ministers, <laughs> yes. maybe even somebody in the church, maybe a priest or a pastor, God forbid. We have to forgive or else we can't be forgiven, but we can't be healed either, you see? So pray for the grace to forgive. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. 
knock and the door shall be opened. But actually, that's an incorrect quote. I checked the Aramaic on this, the original language that Jesus spoke in. Right. No, you know what Jesus actually said? This is very significant. Jesus said, keep on asking. It's the verb form was different, you see. Keep on asking and you shall receive. Keep on seeking and you shall find. Keep on knocking. Now, not once, not twice. Keep on knocking and then you shall receive. Isn't that interesting? Yes. It's different in the Aramaic. In other words, it's, it speaks of perseverance and persistence. So don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trying and keep praying. But ask for the gift to forgive. And never forget, this is true not only for Catholics, this is true for Baptists and for Lutherans and for Pentecostals. The Virgin Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man, the prayers of a righteous woman availeth much. It's in the Bible. Mary is the most righteous woman who ever lived. The Bible says of Mary, blessed are you who trusted. What is trust? It's righteousness. Blessed are you who trusted. Mary is mediatrix of all healing. And so anyone, including our Baptist friends, including Muslims and Buddhists, can pick up the rosary and pray. And Mary is the mother of the human race, which means she loves everyone by name. And she will give you the grace. You may never have thought of this, but at Calvary, they murdered her son in front of her. And she forgave. The Virgin never cursed. She never yelled out anger. She forgave the moment they crucified her son. She forgave them. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful. We never think of that. This woman, whose name is Mary, is the greatest woman who ever lived. And she will give you the grace that she had. She gave it to me to forgive, even in your own family, those who betrayed us. The grace is available. Ask for the grace, especially through the Virgin Mary. It's available. I love that you said that um, perseverance, you know, the true interpretation of keep asking, of ask and you shall receive, because a lot of the times we find people, um, especially those who don't have faith, and you're trying to pray and they tell you, oh, your prayers, God is enlisting, your prayers are going to be answered, or you've been praying for a little while and nothing is happening yet. Um, and you know, you tend to give up. But you clarifying that for us, it, you know, we just need to continue praying and not giving up like what you said, just continue praying. Um, we know that we need to pray precision prayers as well, but um, thank you for sharing that we can go to the Blessed Mother for, to ask for forgiveness because I myself struggle a little bit and I ask for the graces, but like I said, I do love the Blessed Mother. Yeah. Um, so could you give us some miracles, Father, on the Blessed Mother? Yeah, here's one. The, I've, I've seen thousands of miracles. I just had one last night in Bing, okay? Um, it didn't happen last night, but there was a woman there we prayed over. She said, Father, she showed me her camera as we were praying. And she says, Father, this is my daughter, she said. And she had a wedding dress on and was with her young husband. She said, she can't have children, but you were here and you prayed over her tummy. And you told her, you will have a child. A child is coming. She's now pregnant with child. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that's that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I've seen that miracle happen many, many times. It's, it's like it's the miracle of new life, the miracle of fertility. There's one, though, that I happened. It wasn't through myself. It was through a Marian shrine. This is very important for Belize. Why? Because this is Pat Boone's family. Who is Pat Boone? The most famous Protestant singer in the United States of America. The most famous when I was growing up. Wonderful man with a wife. I think he had four or five daughters, and they produce a mini. Pat, Patty Boone was his daughter, who had like number one bestsellers across the world. They are a beautiful Christian family. They're Protestant, but they're beautiful Jesus lovers. And one of their daughters got married, and they could not have children. And every pastor in the whole church prayed for her. And she went around, all the pastors prayed, nothing happened. She tried every day, she went to doctors, she did special prayers, nothing worked. Someone spoke to her one day and said, listen, I know you're not Catholic, but Mary is the mother of all of us. This is a world famous story. You need to go ask Mama Mary. This is a Protestant woman. You need to go ask Mother Mary. She will pray to her son because Jesus can't say no to his mother. I know that's true. 
because my mother's name was Mary. Her name was Maria. I could not say no to my mother for the life of me. Whatever mom asked me, I did because I loved her. My mother was so beautiful. I could never say no to my mom. One time I got mad at my mom. She said, Jimmy, in a certain way. She'd get my heart the way she said it. She wanted to wash the dinner and says, Mama, that's not fair. You know I can't say no to you. I got mad at her just one time. With that. Said, okay, I'll go do the dishes. The only time I ever got mad at her because she said my name a certain way, I had to do it. Can you imagine the Virgin Mary and Jesus, the perfect mother and the perfect son? She would say his name in Aramaic. His name is Yeshua, not Jesus. It's Yeshua. Can you imagine Jesus, even now, I'm getting cold seed, in heaven when Mary says, Yeshua, Yeshua, could you please? Yes, mom, your word is my command. I said yes to my mom and I'm a sinner. Jesus is not a sinner. And he always obeys the Ten Commandments and he obeys and loves his mother. Amen. Amen. This Protestant woman went to see Mary at the shrine she and husband together, they prayed. One month later, she was pregnant. Oh, wow. After 10 years of trying, they became Catholic. <laughs> but you see, Mary's for all of us. And one day, all the churches will be one, even here in Belize. The division has gone on long enough. It has to stop. We have to come together now as one church because Lucifer is on the prowl. He's on the prowl. He's evil, he's ugly, he hates the family. The church must be united to fight him well. So I would encourage everyone to go to Mary. Follow the example of the Boone family. Don't be ashamed. It's biblical. When the Holy Spirit came down for the first time on the church at Pentecost, he did not come down upon just 12 men. The Bible says the Virgin Mary was with the apostles. They were seated around her. Mary was at the center. When the Spirit came down and they all prayed in tongues and prophesied, Mary and the 12 apostles, there is no Pentecost without Mary. That's anti-scriptural. And we must be biblical. Mary was there. She helped bring down the Spirit by her love and her prayers. So go to Mary and ask for any gift you need. She will get it from her son for you. You end up loving Mary, but here's the key you will end up loving Jesus even more. Mary always leads you to Jesus. You will love him even more. Um, we know you've seen countless of miracles and what would you recommend for us if we want to see miracles in our life? See, well, um, you know, childlikeness is very important. Childlikeness for the leaders of the church, for the sisters, but also for the lay people. We need to avoid being professional Christians and professional priests. Uh-uh. Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I see the, the quality and the value of childlikeness. Little children believe. They believe. Once I was giving a, a lecture to kids years ago in New Mexico, hundreds of little kids in the Catholic school. And I taught them about healing these little kids. They were like six and seven and eight. I said, now boys and girls, turn to the kid to your left and your right and put your little hand on their shoulder. And you say to the, to the one next to you, in the name of Jesus, be healed. You should have heard their little voices all throughout the church saying that to one, it was so beautiful. You could feel the Holy Spirit. They all believed. Little did I know what God had in mind. Because I told the kids, when you go home, pray over your parents and your grandparents. Well, one little boy ran home because his grandmother was dying. Now, I didn't know all the kids, like 300, I was just visiting, 300 plus kids. This little boy went home and asked his mom if he could pray over his grandmother, who was all shriveled up and dying. So, Grandmama said yes. He went, he said, Grandma, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Grandma, sat up. She was completely healed and ran to the church that afternoon to give thanks to God. She was completely healed because a little boy had faith. To me, this is the secret of all healing for priests, nuns, laity, and teenagers and children. Have a childlike heart. We can't heal anyone. 
But God can heal everyone. If we have faith, God will use anyone to heal anyone. We have faith. So to have a childlike faith, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but this is what I do now every day. I actually do this because the Bible says about the Virgin Mary, blessed are you who had the faith to believe. Blessed are you who trusted that the Lord's words to you would, would be fulfilled. So every morning I pray, and at every Mass I pray, Mary, give me your faith in Jesus Christ. Give me your hope and give me your love. And now I add one more. Give me your joy. because She's the happiest woman in the world. But I pray for Mary's faith. Mary doesn't believe in herself. Mary believes in Jesus. Right. Mary, give me your faith in Jesus. If everyone does that and believes, from the prime minister down to the homeless man, don't depend on your own faith. Your faith in mine is small, is tiny, is tawdry. Ask Mary to give you her faith in Jesus Christ and then look out because miracles will start to happen and your life will be filled with the Holy Spirit and with joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for joining us. Um, could you say a little prayer for the nation and for everyone who is watching who may need a healing yes. or just a little bit of hope that they know that Jesus can heal? Very good, sis. A healing can happen right through the television. I've seen it happen before. So I'm going to lift up this Holy Cross again. And Lord, I ask you, first of all, to forgive the disease of any and all sins. If anyone has done any sort of serious sin or turned to witchcraft, my Jesus, forgive them. And Lord, I pray the prayer that your mother taught the teenagers in Africa. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, Save us in the whole world. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to bring healing, even of cancer and every other sickness and disease, physical, mental, emotional, and relational. Bless, my Lord, everyone, that miracles abound in Belize, that Belize would be a healthy and holy nation, and may Belize fulfill its destiny to become a light to all the nations of the world, the light of Jesus Christ. I speak healing over Belize, freedom and joy and eternal life in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I speak love. I love you, Belize, and Jesus loves you forever. Amen. Amen.